Good afternoon. Well, it's afternoon for me. So hello, everybody. Today, we, hello, Knuckles, have done, gone on a mission to make cassia. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Cassia? Cassia? Don't know. By a quaint stitch. Uh, this is a very, very involved bag. So I would suggest that beginners probably don't start here. Yes, Knuckles. I know. He's being very pushy under here, aren't you? Um, so halfway through this video, I worked out that this fabric glows in the dark, which I'm so very excited about. Um, but yeah, so this bag has two top zipper sections. And then in here, I've already also put some slip pockets. And then the main section, which I've used these really cool funky zipper pulls. Uh, they were from Bent Needle Designs, Bent Needle Bags. Uh, so in here, I've got a slip pocket on this side and a zipper pocket with an accent. Uh, the black vinyl is mine, the stuff I sell, and this stuff here is from Spotlight. It's a textured dragon scale. And I used antique silver for these instead of the gunmetal. I went with antique silver because I thought it would match in better with this. And then the rest of the hardware is gunmetal grey. So if you want to see how to make this bag, please stay tuned. Alrighty. Good morning, everybody. Let's begin this. Uh, so I've got what I think is all my hardware in my little Lord of the Rings bowl. Um, so the outside I have put both the hefty interfacing as well as bag foam. Uh, most of these patterns are cut on the fold too, which was fun. Um, I probably, I'm just going to say it now, if you're a beginner sewer and never made a bag before, please don't start with this one. There's a lot of pieces and I can see how we could very quickly and easily get um, a little bit unorganized. So I have still got all of my pieces attached, which is okay to show in a video because she hasn't got measurements on there. So that's good. Otherwise I would have had to black them out with the texture. Now I will be following the pattern on this. I've done like a really quick read through, but we're going to do it in order that the pattern says. So we are starting with our outside, which has got the foam. And we are going to need piece O, which is the back pocket panel. And you should have two of those. And I have interfaced them. So... I'm going to do this a little bit differently to the pattern just because I can. So what the idea is, is that we need to put our zipper in here. So if you did it the way the pattern shows, you won't see the back of the zipper in the pocket, but I don't really care about that. So this is going to be a little bit quicker for me, I think. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to find the center. because We always need to find the center of everything. I'm just going to make a really, really small snip. So when you open it out, I don't know if I've ever shown this up close, it makes like a V so that you can see exactly where the center is. So from here, we are going to do a rectangle. And I'm not going to tell you what size it is because I try not to give out pattern stuff. Uh, but we want to go here. And then there to there. Oops, that's a bit crooked. There we go, that's better. And then up. So this is going to be my zipper hole, for lack of a better word. We're going to need our ruler a lot today, I think. So now I'm going to find the center of the back piece. And then again, do a little snip. And so then with right sides together, I'm going to line up those snips and I'm going to clip it down. Now, when clipping, you want to make sure that you don't go over the vertical line that we drew uh, because that's what we're actually going to sew. So we're going to sew the line that we've just drawn with a normal stitch length. So normal for me is two and a half. I am using the M40 thread that I get from Vardman Threads. I have to think about who I got it from then. My brain's not fully awake, I don't think. So I'm just going to sew along this line. As you can see, I'm not in a hurry. Needle down, and we're going to pivot. And I'm just going to keep moving the scully out of my way. And I'm going to backstitch at that end as well. And then trim those tails. Throw your tails straight in the bin. It's nice to have a nice, neat area. So... Now we've got our rectangle. We need some scissors. 
Preferably some sharp ones. And we're going to cut on an angle in here down to but not through your stitches. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip this over and I'm going to attempt to pull the foam away and then cut it off because the bulkiness of the foam is going to make this harder to turn. So another way that you can do it is grab a scalpel and you don't want to put too much pressure, but I'm just cutting through the foam. Now I used my um, heat press to put this on, so it's pretty well fused on there. But I just want to pull as much of it off as I can. And it's just going to help this turn down and be less thick. So if you're on a domestic, this is a really good idea to do. I also possibly could have thought about this when I was ironing. Obviously I didn't. Um, but you just want to try and pull as much of that off as you can. Mine is very well fused, not going to lie. My heat press did a great job. It's not from lack of trying, but it really doesn't want to come off. So I'm just going to use my scissors to kind of scratch at it. Because I took the backing um, holding interfacing, it's now much easier to scratch off. I know this doesn't look super professional, and I'm sure there's a better way to do it, uh, but I don't have one, so there you go. Now, it doesn't look the prettiest, but we're also not going to see it. You just want to try and get as much of that off as possible. Then, I'm going to flip to the right side and push that up, and then squish it over, and it should be much less thick. shouldn't be super duper bulky, because we took off the foam. There is method to my madness, I promise. It doesn't matter how you get it off, just get off the layer. And then I'm just going to use clips. Actually, I'm not going to use clips. I'm going to use double-sided tape, like I've been doing. So, I'm going to put some double-sided tape right along there. Now, it may or may not stick to the foam. It has a mind of its own sometimes, but we can only try... Pull that down and stick it. Now again, it may help. Oh, look at that. It did help. That's good. Poke out those edges. I'm going to put a clip up the top to hold the edge in place. But that double-sided tape did the trick for the most part. So now it's down like this. We need some zipper tape. So I will be cutting my zipper tape as wide as the pocket so that we're going to catch the ends and we don't have to see it. Now when using, when cutting your zipper tape, always cut, you can't see it because it's black on black, but always try and use the back part of your blade so that if you do damage your scissors for any reason while cutting zipper tape, at least it's the back part. Okay, so now we need a zipper. I'm using Smooth Criminal for all the pockets, and I'm going to be using the awesome custom ones that come from Bent Needle in the US. They were a gift. I've been hoarding them, and I'm like, no, use them. So this is this is the day. You also want to singe if you're using, especially if you're using nylon. You want to singe the end of your zipper so that it doesn't fray and annoy you, because it annoys me. So now, have your zipper closing to the left, like that, and then we're just going to lay it down so that your zipper lines up there. So you can actually just add it in, like so. And now I'm going to stitch, I'm going to top stitch around the zipper. You just want to make sure that it's in properly. I possibly should have done a bigger um, hole instead of what the pattern said because uh, my zipper tape's thicker, but it, it'll do. It's going to still work. 
Some people might freak out the fact that the st it's sticking up a little bit, but it won't matter. Make sure you stop with the zipper down, and then I'm just going to unzip it so it's out of my way. And we're going to stitch along, needle down, pivot, and then come up. Like so, and back stitch just to lock it in. And our zip is now in. Ta-da! All right, what does it say to do next? I'm assuming put the back on, but I could be wrong. Uh, let's have a look. I'm just going to base this on. So we're going to put right sides together so that we'll see the nice part of the pocket. And I'm just going to base it to the top here so that I don't get confused with all the rectangles going on. So I'm just doing it right on the edge. So when I say I'm going to base something, I want to make sure that all my stitches are not seen later. So I'm just going to do that. And so now the back of the pocket is on. I could probably also stitch around the pocket so it's closed. I won't be turning my bag through this pocket, so I don't need to keep it... Um, open. Needle down, pivot. So I'm just going around the edge. I've also wound three bobbins for this. I reckon I'm going to need three. I could be wrong. I don't think I am. Alright, so now technically this is the pocket shut and it's attached um, and it's waiting for its top piece now. So, we can put that aside, and it wants us to go, so you should have, you should have eight of these, and four of them should have interfacing. I made mine three quarters of an inch instead of half an inch thing for the stabilizer, just because I think it'll be extra stable. Um, and then the other four, I didn't actually cut. I've just made sure I've got enough here on these scrap pieces because it's very, very hard to cut things and sew things perfectly even. And this is my solution to that problem. So I'm going to take some double side tape, stick it down the middle of all four. You don't want the double side tape poking out at any point, so just make sure you cut it. So you can't see it. I do this with most strap connectors when you have to make them doubly thick because it just works out better for me. Right. Peel off the backing and then I'm just going to stick it onto this. Now this is deliberately bigger. So when I stick it on you're going to have like an edge. So I just cut this like a quarter of an inch bigger than what this would have been so that I can literally just stick them on and have some like wiggle room so that I don't have to place them perfectly. When you cut eight, it's a lot harder to get them absolutely perfect. But if you cut four, stick them down and then stitch them and then cut them, everything's going to work out better. You just need to trust me on that. Or keep watching. You don't actually have to trust me at all. I'm going to show you. So now I've got all of these stuck down. You can even separate this so that they are separate things. However you want to do it. It doesn't really matter. Now I'm going to go up to a decorative stitch length. And I'm going to start on the long bit. And I'm going to stitch an eighth of an inch all the way around. And I'm on, I'm actually on four and a half. I'm very long today. So you want to go nice and slowly because you want to get these points nice. Realistically, you actually only need to get one point nice because the other one won't be seen. But that's not really the point. We aim for perfection. So even when we miss, we're still close. 
And then when we get back to the start, we are just going to do a little bit of a back stitch just to lock it in. Trim off those tails like so. So now it's attached. Looks fabulous. And you can take your scissors and now just cut right next to the original. And this guarantees that it's going to be the same size. It's right about now I really wish that I had silver edge coat paint. It'd be so cool. Look at that. Perfectly cut. No dramas anywhere. And throw that bit in the bin. So yes, I waste a quarter inch of vinyl. Do I care? Not really. I think that was worth it. So I'm going to do it again. Needle down, pivot to the top. So these are a little bit fiddly to do, uh, but they'll look pretty. So it's sometimes it's just worth dealing with it. Also, sometimes it's not. My thread's misbehaving. I don't know if you've seen my other videos, uh, but I've got a new spool of black and the one that kept getting caught every time I was sewing is now purely for making bobbins. Obviously it'll take me a while to get through it, but it's fine. It means that I'm not having to constantly check my thread now, I only have to pay attention to it when I'm winding a bobbin. Which is also why I wound three for this project, all up front. And then I don't have to hopefully stop the video too often. Can't guarantee that. We never know what's going to happen here. I'm also expecting a delivery of vinyl today. So whether it comes today or tomorrow, or who knows. And sometimes they come in the morning and then sometimes the afternoon. You can't really predict these things where I live. You notice I'm going very slowly. This is actually as slow as, I, slow as I can sew on this machine without turning down the actual speed. Because I have a servo motor, if I was doing a lot of fiddly stuff, you can actually slow down the top speed so that I wouldn't have issues. All right. So I'm just going to cut around these. I also really want to edge coat these. I'm having a moment. Edge coat will just finish them off of that little bit more. As you can see, this is a much quicker way to be able to sew them and stick them together because you're not trying to perfectly match up something. As long as you cut your four really well, you should be fine. I don't know. It's your choice how you want to do it, but that's how I do them. Because I feel like that was quicker than trying to perfectly line up the edges and then not work out anyway. And then you still have to trim it. So I want black edge coat paint, which is hiding somewhere in this cupboard. And we are going to edge coat them all. Okay, I can literally find every colour but black. That's not ideal. Let me hit pause while I find it. Edge coat paint has officially disappeared. Uh, so we won't be doing that today, which is very unfortunate. I've looked in all the usual and unusual spots. But edge coating would look cool. Um, if I had known I was out of black edge coat, I probably would have changed my pattern a little bit and done like blue or red, but too late now. So we're going to take our connector paper and I'm just going to clip it on either side through my connector 
so that I can punch all the holes. So you can pre-punch them. One, two, three, and four. So I'm going to repeat this process with all the other ones. You may wonder why we do it like this. You could also just mark it with a pen, but I find this just as quick. Oh, I've been exercising lately and this is really hurting my abs because I'm not standing up. But it punches all the way through. Add the next one. So I do it to all of them and then we're going to use our other thing to position them. One to go. We can put this aside, we won't need that anymore. Achoo! Sorry, I've got the sneezes going. And then I'm going to take my square rings like this and put them in like that. And I'll add a clip just to hold it in place. So you just pick the side you like the most to be the front. Uh, so you can just have a look which way you like better. That's entirely up to you how you want to do that. You could have also got here and then punched through all the layers as well. That would also work. There's lots of ways to do the same thing, really. No way is right or wrong. It's whatever works best for you. So for example, if you don't have a press and you literally hammer the holes, line them all up at once and then you have to hammer half as many. Okay, so there we go. That's those. So now I'm going to grab this. I don't know why I got rid of that. I'm literally going to need it right now. So you can actually line this up like so, and then just punch the holes through. So you just line up the point because we have already sewn it. We possibly also probably should have done this first, but it's too late now. So I'm going to line it up. I'm going to use some clips just because I don't want it to shift. Uniformity is kind of where we're at at the moment. That's why we're using the pattern and not eyeballing it. So I'm going to punch one, and then two, and then I'm going to flip it the other way to do the other side, because now I can see where the holes are, so I can flip it backwards and it won't matter. Line up that point here, and then add a clip, and another one, and punch the holes backwards. One. And two. Other half. So again, I'm lining up the point. I've kind of put the press in the way a little bit, haven't I? We just clip the paper with two and not one so that it doesn't move while I'm lining everything up. Then you just put your rivet all the way through everything. Okay, so I got holes everywhere now. Now I'm going to need my other press with the rivet set. Uh, you don't actually need two presses, you can just interchange them all. But if you've seen my videos before, you know that I go back and forth a lot. 
so this works out better for me. So this is the time you have to pick your front and then we're going to push the rivet through and through. And then I'm going to go through here like that. And then I can come to here and put it through these holes as well and put some caps on the back like that. And then squish all the layers. I'm going to turn this this way because I am right handed. So I'm going to line that up and squish. Line it up and squish. And then I can take off my little clip. So that lined up perfectly because they have done all the math for you and I like that. One, you just have to make sure the holes actually punched out because sometimes it cuts it if it doesn't push the bit out and you need that out of the way so that you can see what you're doing. So there's one, you can even probably take that off now if it's in your way. And then we're going to go through the next lot. And you can do top or bottom first. It actually doesn't matter at all. You put them in however you want. You are the boss of your own universe. Last one. Now these are pretty strong because it's two layers of vinyl and I put the stabilizer that I use on the bottom of bags for the inside. Whoops, I want the other side to be the top. Otherwise you see my join. So that again, just think about that as you put them in. Make sure all the bits out. See here, it's punched it, but it's still got the leftover bit. So I just, I want that gone. So I'm using my rolling edge coat tool to poke them out. You can use whatever. Like I said, no right and wrong answer. All right. So that's now pushed through like so. Voila. Next one. Line it up. Again, poke it through and put a cap on the bottom and then do the same for the other one. And the cap, you should push it until you kind of feel it click or give. Sometimes they click, sometimes they don't. And then we are going to pop it under and squish. Now we've got the other half to do. And then our strap connectors are on and these are really cute. I like this. Make sure you've got at least um, eight millimeter tall rivets where you might not get through all the layers. If you've got really thin rivets, uh, I would suggest getting some thicker, like longer ones. If they're really, really short, not thin, short. All right, last one. Poke it, poke it, cap it. One and two. So there you go. Now you should have all your strap connectors on and like a big loop. Now to sew from now on, I'm going to push these down over the connectors and that way it won't get in my way for any reason. So that's that done. Moving on to... Okay, so now I want us to go to our centre bit, which is the big funky shaped one. Now there's a couple of ways we can do this. I have already decided on my way. So I'm going to lay this down 
And I'm actually going to use paper scissors, which are my red ones, to cut out this here box. So there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can do it with a facing, or we can just draw this box on and then pretend like we've sewed it and turn it through. So I'm going to do that because that feels like a much better plan. And even though they've got a short triangle on the end, I will be making my triangle longer than that to guarantee that it tucks under and catches. But I'll show you that in a second. So now that I've put, cut that bit out, we're going to line it back up on here like this. And using, I actually want to use a raceable pen because I'm using a light fabric. I don't want to see this later. And my fabric is literally white. So let's not do that. And then I'm going to draw the rectangle. And then I'm going to flip it to the other end because it's a fold kind of a deal. Now, if you've got non direction, if you've got directional fabric, it does say to do a join in the center so that you won't um, see that. But also, when it sits down, it's going to sit up the right way. Okay, so that's that one. I'm going to do the same to my lining. So, my outside piece has got my hefty interfacing, um, and then this has got the woven medium. Just to give it, I nearly was going to put this interfacing on both, but I don't want it to be so stiff that it sits funny, which is why I ended up doing what I did. So again, we're going to draw the rectangle like so, and then flip her over like this, and line it up. There. And draw the rest of the rectangle. Whoops. Okay. That's all drawn. Next up, I'm going to cut the center of it. So I'm going to fold it in half. We're just skipping the part where we sew it. So I'm going to cut the center and then we're going to head to the iron and I'm going to iron it so it sits flat. Or actually I might use double sided tape. Feels like a better plan. Alright, so I'm triangling out that corner and then we're going to go the other way and do the same thing. Trying to go out the corner and then do the same here. So fold it, snip it in the center or as close to the center as you can do. Then when we get close to the end, we triangle out that corner. And then again, triangle the corner. Awesome. Double sided front is definitely, double sided tape is definitely going to be your friend. That's the end of that roll. So that's no good to me. Luckily, I buy these in like fives or threes or something. This one's actually going to be too thick. So before I do that, I'm actually going to use the skinnier one because I don't want this to pop out. So this is quarter inch or six mil tape and the other one is 12 mil or half inch. So I'm just going to go all the way up the side. There's a kid yelling out the front of my house. It's not mine though so it's fine. Alright and then to there All 
Alright, so I've got double-sided tape on the outside edge of both lines. I'm going to pick off the backing. And then I'm going to fold this on that line. I'll fold it over. Now, because of the type of interfacing I use, that is actually working very, very well. Because where I drew is also kind of made a little groove. So that comes back beautifully. I will need to still iron it, as you can see. But for the most part, this is working great. I'm also going to do a small bit on each of the triangle ends as well. And we're going to do this same thing to the lining piece. Okay. So I need two little bits for the ends. And this might seem pointless, but I really don't want that triangle running away on me. And I don't want it to come out while I'm trying to sew. So by pinning it down, it kind of solves a lot of my problems. Or future problems, at least. So then here, that tiny little bit, we pick the backing off and then just pull the triangle back as far as I can and press. That still needs an iron, uh, but we're basically now not going to have any raw edges. So before I go to the iron, I'm going to grab the second one and do the same thing so that I can iron them both at the same time. This is both awesome and a little bit time consuming, but it will be worth it. The other option is, is that you could have done a facing. Um, so have a piece of fabric slightly bigger than this, stitch it and then turn it through and iron it. Much of a muchness really. Just going along the pen line, making sure it's folded correctly. I flip it around. I'm just flipping it around because I find it easier to pull it towards me and because I can see where the fold line is, which definitely helps. Also, make sure you're putting away your rubbish in the bin as you go or whatever you use as a bin. Um, it will help maintain everything nice and neatly. All right, so that's the long bits done. And then again, we're gonna take a little tiny short bit, stick it on the ends to hold back. Ah, it's stuck to my finger. When it's that small, sometimes it doesn't want to get off me. It will. It's just a bit fiddly. But worth it. Back and down. Same with the other end. Little tiny piece. On the end. Backing off and then just tug at that triangle and pull it down. So there you go, from this side there is now no raw edges and same with the other one. I'm gonna hit pause and go and iron these so that they sit super flat. Um, the the double-sided tape was just like a guiding help. But I'm gonna iron these to make sure that they're super flat and then we can put our zip in. Now iron that nice and flat. So now you need to get a piece of double uh, zipper tape, sorry. Grab some zipper and you want it to just be slightly bigger than your hole. Obviously if it's shorter that's not going to work out and if you've got it exactly the same length then you're going to not cat your, catch your edges. So I'm going to singe both of them and then I'm going to take, this is where my double fancy zips are going to be. Uh, so I'm using the Hotel Terra. 
uh, key and the clock as my zipper pulls just because I can. Uh, for anybody that doesn't know what these are, they are from like Disneyland, I believe. There's like a ride. So, one on, go to the other end. We're going to crack it, stick the other end on. And I'm going to then make them go together, just anywhere roughly in the center, to make sure that one side is not bulging more than the other. Uh, so ignore the zipper pulls, but the actual zip itself, you don't want to have like a bulge on one side. It means that your zip is not even, uh, but we are fine. So now, more double-sided tape, because it is your friend. I'm going to stick some over the fold that we just did. Eh, hold up. So what's happening here? is it's no longer attached to the interfacing. So I'm going to stick just a little bit of double-sided tape under here to tack that down because apparently ironing didn't quite do it for it. Like that. See, now it won't move. Now we can go back to putting more double-sided tape right next to the edge. So you don't want to, you don't want it to go all the way to the edge. We don't want to see this later. We just want it next to the edge. Like this. This is going to hold our zip down. So you can go a little bit past the end for this. And then same on the other side. You don't want to go too far out because then it won't catch the zip. Uh, but you don't want to go too far in because you don't want to see the double sided tape from the outside. So I've got probably an eighth of an inch away from the folded edge that we did. And then we're going to peel off this. You don't have to use double-sided tape. I just find it quickest and easiest. So I'm going to start at this end. And I want my teeth in the middle. So you can even... Oop, no, we can't do it that way. Because I just lifted up half the tape when it stuck to the table. Awesome. Let's try that again. So, teeth in the centre... And then stick it down. Like this. And you can check it to make sure it is actually working the way you want. Uh, you're going to have a little bit of trouble when you get to the zipper pull. So kind of hang it off the edge so that they can hang down and then line it up. And then continue along. And then you can turn it over and make sure it's all even. Now, if it's too close anywhere, like here, you can just lift it up and pull it back a little bit and then re-stick it down. Like that. That's one side on. Now, more double-sided tape. I know it seems a lot, but you want the zip to stay and because we're trying to put two halves perfectly aligned we're going to use more tape so we're going to do the same thing again except this side's going on the bottom same process right next to but not over the edge pick off the backing Make sure you've kind of pushed it down pretty well so that we don't have a repeat of before where it lifted. And then here's where it gets trickier. So I'm going to put my thumb right at the edge here and then I need that to line up perfectly with that bit there. Like that. And then it all needs to line up together. So you need the zipper in the center like this so i'm kind of just rolling it on and really hoping that this is lined up but i am going to check it i'm not totally crazy uh, and by checking it you just unzip it like that to make sure that it's not poking out anywhere Of 
flip it over. It's looking pretty good. I can bring it a little bit closer here. Because we don't want to miss it when we're top stitching. Okay? But that all looks pretty good. So, now that it's all stuck down, theoretically, now we can top stitch around the zip. So I'm going to go here. I'm going to go on a three stitch length. You can kind of just pick whatever stitch length you like. Um, and if we don't manage to catch the bottom, which I'm fairly confident we will, but if we don't, we can always do a second line of stitching. down, pivot up the other side, and then when we get close to the zipper pull, I'm going to zip it that way so it's out of the way, and then continue. You also want to make sure you're not running out of um, thread, like bobbin thread, that would suck. I always like to keep an eye on it every so often. And then when you get back to the start, you can back stitch. So now the big reveal is to turn it over and see how I did. But we got the whole thing. See that? Boom. And so now that's your middle bit done. And these edges, because we've sewed it like this, will be separated. Uh, for easier to sew. Oh, I'm so proud. We nailed that. Alright, so that's our middle bit done. I'm going to put that aside and I am moving on to the big domey looking piece, which I'll tell you what number it is in a second. There's a lot of pieces here. Okay, so we're going to B lining body panel piece which is this one keep this handy so that we know where we're putting our zipper pocket piece we also want our zipper accent piece and i believe we want p but i just want to double check on that i'm pretty sure we're going to need p It is P. Oh, look at me go. It's almost like I know stuff. So what does it want us to do? Alright, so this is going to be our zipper pocket panel. So let's do this bit first because it's quick and simple. So we're going to take this. And we want some zipper that is the same length, so I literally just line it up and cut it. You can pre-cut all of these, but then you have to remember which ones go with what. I found that quicker. Um, and I've got a big wad of zipper tape, so I know I've got enough. If you're concerned you won't have enough, maybe pre-cut them then, but otherwise I find it just as easy to have the roll next to me. And then just do them as I go. That way I can't possibly mix it up, that's crooked. It's like one tooth crooked, but it does make all the difference. You need to trust me on that. There we go. Now there's no lump there. I remove all these scissors. I don't need this much stuff in my space. Always try and keep your space clean. <laughs> Lining side up. Zipper right sides up. And I'm going to baste it to the edge. This is just to hold it in place before we go and stitch it later. Back stitch to lock it in just out of habit. Trim off the tails, throw them in the bin. Grab the other side, do the same thing. Now this is a pretty non-directional lining. Um, I did choose it for that reason. I don't have to concentrate so much about how I cut it when it's non-directional. 
The skulls are kind of everywhere. Okay, that's crooked. What have I done? My zipper is slightly longer than the fabric. So when I started at that end, that didn't match up. So I don't use... I refuse to use a quick unpick. I find them dangerous to whatever I'm making. I tend to stab holes in them. So instead, I just trim the thingos. So, see how it's just that little bit too big? Unfortunately, that did make all the difference. So I'm going to chop it off. Now when I line it up, it should be actually even. So again, I'm just going to line it up on that edge like so and stitch down see that's better all right so now it's attached so when you look in the pocket you will have the linings so that that's the big point there all right so that's gonna go with this now i just need to line this up so we're just gonna grab one of these for our zipper pocket piece. I'm also guessing that we're going to uh, be turning it through this. So I'm just going to cut that out so I can line it up better. And over here somewhere pretty sure I had a spare bit of paper, uh, fabric. Well, maybe not. Okay. Flip her over on the back. So we're drawing on the back and not the front. This is a dark lining, so I am just going to use a normal pen. You can stick with your erasable one if you prefer. We're just going to draw... The zipper box. Same as before. And then we're going to do the same thing as before as well. And we're going to cut the center. So I fold it in half to get like a little nick. And then you can open it out to do the rest. And then we're going to triangle out those corners. I'm going to make them nice and chunky so they stay where they're told. Like that. Go the other way. And then again, double-sided tape. We're going to use a lot of double-sided tape today, guys. Make peace with that. Still using my skinny one. Right on the edge. And then again, right on the edge. And the short edges while I'm here. That's just to hold our triangles back. You can iron this instead. You don't have to use double-sided tape. But that would require me getting up, pausing the video, turning it off. Whatever. This is a way where you get to stay seated. The other option is, is that you can do all of this in your prep. So prep all of these before you start. Oh, see? See that? The interfacing stuck, but then the, the actual fabric came back. So I'm going to put another bit of double-sided tape. And then stick that one back too. I wonder if this side will do the same. No, we're good. Okay. Awesome. I could have, again, if I was ironing that, I could have just pressed it. This is going to do the same. See how that's separated? That is not going to be my friend. So I am going to beat it at its own game and cut away the interfacing. Since it's already not stuck, I can just take it out. Again, or you can put a second line of interfacing, whatever you prefer. I am just as happy to cut it off. It would have sit here. All right. So now we're going to fold that back at the line, like so, and back 
and back and back and push down. Other side. Oh, see, it's doing it again right there. So that just means I didn't hold the iron in this section long enough when I was prepping it. Sometimes, and I should have done it this time, um, I put them after I've ironed the interfacing on and then cut it out. I will sometimes also put it under the heat press because it just gives it that little extra. But I didn't this time, as you can tell, and now I am paying for it. Now the little bits of double-sided tape that are sticking out, I am going to cut them off so that this doesn't stick to the table while I'm trying to sew it. Because that's going to make it way harder to do if it's constantly sticking to the table. So it's mainly just where it triangled out. It's obviously thinner. So I'm just picking up and off those bits. And sometimes you don't even need scissors. It'll just tear away. All right, that one doesn't want to tear. That's right. All right, that's better. Flip her over. We've now got our zipper box. We're going to take this and put it over the top with more double-sided tape. Okay. Again, I'm using the skinny one. I'm trying to do this in order that the pattern tells us to, by the way, which is why we're kind of jumping around a little bit. So this just sits over there like that and like that. And then I'm going to stitch the outside edge, not the inside, because obviously the zipper's not in there yet. I'm going to start on a straight bit because it's always easier to start and finish on a straight. going to go around the curves nice and slowly around the edge back to the start and back stitch Voila. Now, that zipper pocket that we did, we're going to open it up like so. And again, I want my zipper closing to the left like I always do. So I'm going to line that up in the middle like that, up close to the edge, in the center, and then we're going to stitch around the inside. So I'm just going to hold that in place. Slow and steady wins the race. And this one has a curve here, which I probably should have just made a square so it would have been easier to sew, but whatever. And then sew along there. And then when I get to the zipper pull, I'm going to zip it past it so it's not in my way. And then continue... Lining up that zip in the center of the space and stitching it down. And stitch and back stitch. Oh, look at us go. So now that's in and opened and wonderful. And so now I'm going to just let the pocket fall down and trim off the excess of the front one so that they are even. Excellent. All right, I'm gonna leave the bottom of this one open to turn the bag through. 
Unless I've already done that somewhere else. Nope. Cool. Just checking. So I'm just going to stitch the two sides. And back stitch. Trim off those tails. And then up the other side. And back stitch. Alright, so I'm going to leave this both open undone here and open at the bottom and this is where I assume I'm going to turn the bag through. So that's that section done. Let's keep scrolling. Do do do. All right, pleated zipper pocket piece. So I'm going to put this one aside because that's done. I'm also going to, I think this is what I'm about to need. I might keep that up here. Into our tub and we need the one that's called pleated pocket. This one's card slots. Um, side pocket panels. Pen slip pocket. Pleated slip pocket. Here we go. Which is piece R. And I also happen to know that there's a slip pocket binding piece. Which I've done in black just because I didn't know if the... um textured vinyl was going to work out as well as I'd hope. So what's this? Card slots, base, done that bit. Ah, we're down to an almost manageable, manageable amount now. So we're going to fold this lengthways and together. I did a little bit of um, Frankensteining because I wasn't paying attention. So I had to Frankenstein some of the interfacing, but that's fine. So we're going to fold it this way and then stitch down the edges. One. Making sure you're using the seam allowance, the pattern says. There. And again, back stitch, stitch. We're leaving the top open because it's going to be closed with our vinyl accent piece. I'm also going to just chop off the excess at the corners to keep the bulk down and to get nice pointy corners as well. I like it when it's pointy. And then we're going to turn it through. One and two. Poke it out with my thumb. Excellent. So now this is what I've got. So I'm going to take this and my vinyl squishing thing and I fold it in half and then just create a crease with this. Uh, the crease is going to help us in a minute. So this is definitely worth doing unless you want to use more double sided tape, which you could do too. But I just, I find this easier. If there's already a crease in the halfway mark, you can just slot it in then. You can use anything, use a credit card or whatever. But see how there's now a, a crease at the fold? So now when I put this on, I just crease it where it was already creased. And line it up with the edge. And then I'm going to start on there and backstitch. So I'm going to start with the backstitch first by moving in a little bit. And then just fold this down and stitch it along the top. Because I've already got that halfway crease mask, mark, not mask, it's much easier. Apparently when I was guesstimating what size I needed, I overestimated. Uh, so I'm going to have a little bit extra, but that's alright, we just cut it off. Also, make sure you've still got um, bobbin. I imagine I'm going to run out pretty soon. Trim off the tails, then I'm going to get my vinyl cutting scissors and trim off that excess. And a pocket, we now have. This is where I need the measurements for the pleated pocket. So I've put that on, so we're happy. I need to find the centre. Ooh, which side do I like better? They're both pretty good. 
that's something else to think about if you're using directional fabric you'll need to make sure that you have the right side up so I'm just gonna finger press this in half and then I need to measure with I'm gonna use my chalk or chaco pen so from the center out might as well mark the center with chalk so I can see it and the other side so we should now have three marks in the middle and then what does it want from me and then nothing then we're going to take our non pocketed piece here and find the center I'm going to fold it in half and snip it because we're probably going to need it later anyway and I'm going to do the same to the top before I've got pockets on there that are going to distract me we always need to find the center of everything ever so I need to measure we can even just rule a line so that I can see what I'm doing I'm going to stitch this line for the most part anyway so I'm going to go up rule a line and it needs to be that big so half of that my brain can't do this nine four and a half three quarters is three eighths one two three so there's the middle of there that hurt my brain way more than it should have Ah, but here we are. Alright, so there's our markings for where the pocket needs to sit. And it should be bigger than our markings because we have to fold it in. So the first thing I'm going to do is line up the centre mark with the centre there and stitch that down. And that's going to create us two separate pockets. I was going to say panels then, but that's not right. So I'm going to stitch and back stitch. Lock it in. And then we're going to get up to the top and I'm going to back stitch like that. That is now attached. Then at that crease, I'm going to bring that crease to the center line that I just created. Like that. Yeah, see, my maths was out. It's fine. And then I'm going to stitch, and I'm going to do one half a time because my fingers can't deal. I thought that was wrong. My brain couldn't maths today, and that's okay. So now that that bit's down, I'm going to get to almost... So I'm going to put the foot, like, one stitch into that fold, and then I'm going to come and do the other side at the same time. So we actually care more about the bottom than the top. Bring it together, stitch, stick it on the line. Needle down. That line that I did that was wrong was actually still helpful because I can at least use it as a guide to make sure my pocket is straight. If nothing else. And then we're going to back stitch when we get to the top. Usually I would use a calculator, but, you know, we didn't, and that's okay. So I'm just going to rub off those chalk markings now, because I don't need them. But I've now got two pockets that are just, like, a little big. And I like that. You can also rub off the markings on the pocket. And there you go. And the little black accent actually manages to show you where the pocket is, which is good. So that's that one. Now we are up to the pen slip pocket. So that's that piece done. I'm going to pop it aside. Now I need this one. 
and it's going to be similar to what we just did. So again, we're going to need the matching bit. So that is the pen pocket binding and this is the pen slip pocket. Let me just grab a drink and we're going to do the same starting kind of thing. Fold it in half. Make sure you're doing it the right way. Which I don't think I am. It's hard with my non-directional fabric. I don't really know what's going on. All right, stitch, back stitch, down we go. And then we're going to do the same to the other side. If you wanted to, you didn't have, if you don't use pens, uh, you don't carry pens anymore, you don't need to do this. You can just do another pocket, same as the last one. Or you could just do like a flatter pocket. But here I am doing it all because you never know. This might be the bit you need to know about. And I stick my fingers all the way in the corner and then I kind of make like this motion with my fingernails and then push with my thumbs. And if you do it correctly, you should get nice pointy corners. But make sure you trim off that excess because that's a big part of it. All right, again, with the crushing of the edges, or you could use double-sided tape, because that's what they use in the pattern. Um, I feel like I've probably used enough double-sided tape for now, so I am going to attempt to avoid any more, except on the handles. I was going to do rolled handles, uh, but I don't have any core of any description here. And I'm in lockdown and everything's shut. So, unfortunately, we're going to have to do flat handles due to the lack of stuff around me. I apologise if that's what you wanted to see from this video. I will maybe do these handles on another bag once lockdown is over and I can get stuff again. Because Frankensteining patterns is something I definitely love to do. I get inspired by different bits of patterns. And handles is always a big one. So again, we're going across. When we get to the end of the fabric, we want to backstitch, not the end of the vinyl, because maybe I was right the first time in the way that I was holding it. Who knows? Uh, but this worked out well, because there's like a nice scented skull. That was a fluke. I promise I did not intend on doing any of these things with any of the fabric. All right. Another slip pocket. So we now need one of uh, M. So M are like the the side pockets. So we're gonna add this to a side pocket, and then the card slots will go on another one. All right. So I need to center it. So again, we're going to find the center bottom. We won't need the center top for this, so I don't need to worry about that. Center bottom, get a ruler, measure up, find halfway. Good way to do this is line up, fold it in half, line it up like this. Oop, hold on. Like that, and then just open it out, and that's where it's going to sit. The first thing I'm going to do is stitch. Oh my god, that's really crooked. Make sure you're paying attention to what you're doing. That was really crooked of me. Alright. So now I'm going to stitch around the edge. And you could just leave this as one big pocket if you wanted to. Or if you're somebody that carries like a lot of snack and protein bars and stuff, you could make it so that they slot in perfectly for, you know, snack meals. Whatever you want, really. It's your bag. Trim all of this off. 
all of your tails. Try and do them as you go. Makes it easier than trying to do a million of them at the end. And then, just anywhere. So I'm going to literally do it here because that's where the glue landed. Of course, you can be more precise about this. I need my chalk pen, which is MIA. Oh, it's fine. It's fine. I will use an, er er uh, an erasable pen. So I'm going to just do a line here. And then I'm going to measure over and do another line here and that is my pen section so it's roughly in the middle you don't you can follow the pattern or you can eyeball it like I am just depends on what size you want for the rest of your panels really so we're gonna go all the way up all the way into the binding and then without cutting it I'm just gonna come straight to the other side I'll tr oh, I've run out of bobbin. Finally! Thought I would have run out ages ago. Although it was a full one. My videos usually never start with a full bobbin. It's whatever I had left over from last time. Because I don't like to waste things. Either way, black is popular and I will get through all of these. Oops. All right, let's try that again. So we're just going to go back probably three stitches from where I run out of bobbin just to help lock in the old thread and then come up and back stitch, swivel, jump over to the other side without cutting the tail because it's quicker. We'll cut it in a minute and back stitch. Now I've got a lot of tails going on. That's right. Trim that one. And that one, and the one at the top, which is being tricky. And then pull it out, flip it over, and then trim those ones as well. And you wouldn't have as many if you didn't run out of bobbin thread. But, so now you've got a pen pocket in the middle, and then you've got these two little pockets on the side. Next section. Um... All right, card slot piece. Here we go. Now, I didn't put interfacing on this. Um, this is the only one I didn't interface because I like I don't like my card slots to be too thick, personally. Um, so, the picture has it like this. So, we're going to do this. And then we need to, again, I really need that chalk pen. And I don't have a backup super annoying anyway we're gonna take this and we need to measure down and draw a line and then we need to draw another line and another line and then there should be a little bit at the bottom looks like the picture we're doing good so far all right Fold at the first line, like this, and then top stitch. We can do that. This one I'll need to follow the pattern a little bit more. But we got this. Right, stitch at the top line. Next. Okay, we're going to just fold it all the lines, apparently. Find the next line. And stitch. <laughs> Trim those tails, both of them. And then the last one. Trim, trim. Gosh. Oh, maybe I 
right, wasn't supposed to do that line. Whoops. I don't think I was meant to. Anyway, it's fine, it's fine. So I'm going to measure up. Oh, look at that. I perfectly eyeballed that. It's like I know stuff. I swear. So I wasn't meant to tr uh, do the end line, which is actually the top, which is kind of annoying. So I will be taking it out. This was just a line to measure up towards, apparently. How disappointing. I was on a roll. See, and this is why you should read the pattern, people. And I'm leaving this in so that you learn from my mistake. Read the pattern. Don't just do everything that you assume needs to happen. And even if I wasn't recording, I still would have done this same mistake. Because I'm impatient and didn't read it. Learn from my impatience. It is coming out. I've got about half of it out so far. Sometimes you can gather it and it will come out and sometimes it won't. See? There we go. Ah! Much better. So I'm going to bring that to there. And I'm going to bring this to here. And then I'm going to double check that my eyeballing is correct. Just cause. I've got to say, it's not too far off. Look at that. Alright. And then I'm going to stitch from the bottom up, because I always find this easier, and kind of base them in place right at that edge. And that's curving because the tail got stuck under the machine. Alright. And then we're going to come and do the same to this end. But again, I want to go bottom to top because it holds it all in place. Trim off all the tails and push them in the bin. Right. Middle. Double check it's the middle. Alright, now I'm going to stitch those two lines. Yeah, awesome. From bottom to top. Move my pen. And again, bottom to top. And then we need our little short bits. Actually, we need a few pieces. So we need our little short bits, which are the card slot sides. And we're going to need our card slot backing piece. Alright, so we're going to go right sides together along this edge, back stitch, stitch and turn down, and then this one as well. And then just for an added thing, I'm going to top stitch this back just so it sits nicely and flat same with this side and I just dropped that that's all right I'll get it in a minute grab this piece right sides together like so that's our top. Alright. So, we now want to stitch around. Yep. Too 
fart. Top stage. Down the side. Face. And you want to leave a little bit of a gap to turn through. That's why we started there. Gonna reinforce that bit because it was pretty close to the edge. Alright, then trim off all this excess with which I'll be honest I don't know why it's there probably something moved when I was stitching but that's okay it's still gonna work out fine and then through the gap poke it out You're going to poke your corners out when you get to them. You want your corners as sharp as you can get them. So just keep poking at them until they go the way you want. And they always will eventually. You just sometimes have to spend a little bit more time on them. All right. So then that gets tucked up under there. This is our little opening here. So we're trying to make it nice and flat, like so. And then this is going on another side, which is side out piece M. And it's going up quite a lot further than the other ones were. about there and if you don't top stitch you get an added pocket uh, or you can top stitch it down that is your choice I am going to opt not to so down the side along the bottom because that's where I left my gap if you happen to have left your gap along the top uh, you can either pre top stitch it before you attach it or you can just stitch it down and not have that extra pocket that is your choice. As it stands at the moment, I've now got that as well as card slots. Trim off those tails. And I think that is now it for pieces. We are up to final construction. That's exciting. All right, so we're gonna take these panels. You're gonna want all of these. So one, so you should have two plain and two with some pockets. Uh, this one should have your pen pocket, although if you put it on a different one, that won't matter. Uh, what size zip do I need? That's important. Um. So we need them a little bit longer than what we're going on because we're going to put little zip ends on them. So I'm going to measure two the same length. So that's where the pocket ends. So that's what I'm going to cut. I know that's not the most fanciest way to do stuff, but apparently that's what we're doing today. And then I want two the same length so that everything's matching like so oh I think this is the last of the zipper now that's good we're gonna melt those ends like so and then what does it want us to do We're going to bend down the ends at one end like this and tack them in place for both the zippers. Right, one. And 
True. So with the second side, you want to make sure it's even with the first one. It's very important that things are the same. That's why we're tacking it to begin with. So that's one end. Now we're going to do the same to the second zip. Crack it, bend it. So what I'm doing is I'm grabbing the end and just pulling it down. Sorry, I'll try and do it not on my black top. Didn't really think that through when I wore it. So you want to pull it down at a right angle. And then we're going to pinch it and then shove it under here and stitch it down. And just do a couple of back stitches right on the edge so that we won't see these stitches later. It's just to hold it in place. Same to the other side. So you want to make sure it's lining up. Oops, sorry. Lining up nice and even. I'll put it on my arm. There we go. I did have my beautiful green jacket on, but it's actually a bit too warm to wear it today. All right. Trim. So that's that bit done. Make sure you take off all the tails. They will get in your way later and annoy you. So we're going to take this one with our pocket and we want the zipper. I'm just following the picture at the moment. So we want the zipper and I'm going to separate it. And I'm going to get a ruler and measure it and then line it up there and clip it in place. And then we're going to move along and continue clipping it down. Now normally I'm not a big fan of clips, but when it comes to doing zips like this, I definitely clip them in place. Unless I'm eyeballing stuff, but I'm trying not to do that today. So we want to get to here. To there. And then I'm going to bend it down at a 90 degree angle and then put a clip there. What that will do is prevent me stitching the rest of it, which is important. And then we're going to take a plain piece and we're going to do the same thing, except everything will be going in the opposite direction. If it's going in the same direction, you've got one of your zips upside down. So please pay attention to that. It is important. So that goes there. And then we're going to clip across. Grab some clips. See, I feel like I'm running out of room because I've got all those pieces on here. So they can just move. And I'm getting close to the end now. So I'll bring back that ruler. Get it to where I want. And then turn it down like that and clip it. Done! Now what does it want me to do? Stitch it down and then join the zipper pocket together and make it a pocket. Okay, I can do that. So we're going to start where it folds and we're going to stitch. We're going to backstitch when we get to the end of the zip and clean up the clips because I'm already feeling like I don't have enough space without making it any worse. And then we're going to do the same thing here. So we're going to start at the zip and then end at the zip. And backstitch. And then we're going to grab these pieces, we're going to get the zip together like this. I always like to do it right sides up, but you can attach it however you want. Sometimes I even use my zipper jig that my husband made. Pretty sure there's a video of that somewhere. And then zip it up, make sure that it's even. It is fantastic. And then we're going to stitch around. I'm going to start here, we're going to 
put those tails in their place like so. I'm gonna stitch. Actually, I'm gonna put the needle in and then I'm gonna back stitch. There we go. Just because it was giving me a little bit of grief. We're gonna stitch, needle down, pivot round, match up the bottom with the bottom. Should match, should all be the same size. And then get to the end. Swivel. And then up. I know what I forgot to grab. I forgot to grab the zip ends. So I will have to pause at some point to do that. But that's one. I believe we are now going to repeat that. It does look like it. So we're going to do the same to this slot. So I'm going to crack the zip apart. I'm going to measure like we did with the other one. Clip it on. There is no right or wrong side to do. You do it however you want. And then when I get close to the end, I'm going to use the measure. I should really get a smaller measuring ruler for this. And then clip. And then we'll do the same to the other end. So at each end, there's a different amount of seam allowance, by the way. I'm not going to tell you what it is, because that's not what I do. I try not to give out measurements where possible. Sometimes I do it on my own patterns, because the only one that's going to tell me off is me. All right, one more measure. And then we're going to base them on. I'm not sewing right up against the zipper tape because I can see I obviously need to add something else at some point. Uh, the pattern does come with a fabric zipper tab that you can do on the end, but I've just decided that I want to use zip ends because I'm a little bit obsessed with them at the moment. <laughs> Nothing wrong with that. I'm going to chain stitch these together because I'm organised enough to do it this time. Normally never happens. Alright. Trim off those tails. Grab your zip end and put the next one on so I like to try and kind of hold them about the same it does help on zip it up make sure it's even and then again we're gonna zip around now if you're struggling with this end start in and back stitch first because that corner where the zipper joins doesn't necessarily want to be friends. Turn. Needle down. Turn. Back stitch. Pull. Trim. Right. You can put those zip ends on whenever, I guess. But that's now two of those. Now let's go see where we're up to. Oh, this is where it wanted us to join that, but we've already done that because I did it earlier. So that's good. Um, Oh, I hear my husband coming home. I'm going to pause this until he is gone from lunch. Uh, so while Hubby was home for lunch, I did do one side. Um, but I will video the second side, obviously. So we're going to join front to back as a single thing. 
um, which I started doing and then realized I was supposed to be recording. So we'll just do that again. And then I'm going to find the center of each point because one side is bigger than the other. So therefore it won't look like it's in the center. So what I'm going to do, so this is the top, the straight part. So I'm going to join seam to seam there and put a clip like that. And then seam to seam on this one. And then that's the center. And then if you put those two clips together, you will find the side points. So there, and it also kind of makes the pointy part there at the bottom edge, the points at the side, just if that helps you. So that's now what we've got. Before I continue though, we need to put our zipper end on. Um, I always, even though I have cupboards, I always keep them in the bags so that I don't lose the tiny little screw. It is a paranoia of mine. And even though I have backups, that's not really the point. So I'm gonna put that on there because it is slightly magnetized. To put the end on, I'm gonna fold the zip down and down to kind of make like a triangle point. And then this should just kind of slip on. So you wanna push it in as far as it'll go. And then that way the back, both edges, you can't really see it because it's black on black, but see how they kind of create a, a point because obviously the end is bigger or wide or skinnier than the zip. So you push it in as far as you can. And then I'm going to use my little electric screwdriver, which I really need to get new batteries for. And then we're just going to screw it in. Because my batteries are nearly dead, I have to manually screw it, which is fine. Just defeats the purpose a little bit of having an electric screwdriver. And you want to screw it in until it's at least flush or further if you can, depending on how thick it is. Because um, you don't want to be able to feel the screw when you run your finger along it. Now I'm going to zip it open so like this and I'm going to turn this right sides out like this. Now we're going to slot this down over the top or however which way you want to look at that and then this side one here I'm going to put at that point there and then I'm going to do the same with the other end making sure that my zip is out of the way of the stitching because we obviously don't want to get the zip that would be bad and that's why I did that little tuck when it went underneath So we're going to go line that one up with that, not the seam. You want to line it up with your clips. And then if you pull corner to corner like this, everything else should pretty much line up and you can just add some clips in around it like so. You want to make sure the zipper tape is pointing down and out of the way and I'm also going to open these out flat so that they are less bulky when we top stitch. Going along. Flatten that on out. There. And there. So now that's clipped together so right sides are touching. I'm also a little bit concerned as to why I have an extra zipper pull left over. Mm, don't know. Maybe I just miscounted. Could be a thing. Alright, so I'm now going to stitch as close as I can to the zipper teeth, uh, which should be just inside um, where our basting line is. Now the pattern does say to leave a gap at the end, but I found with whatever I'm using, it was fine to just sew around. So that's what I'm gonna do. It's 
So long as you're slightly inside of that original stitch line, that base of the zipper down, you're not going to see it. If you can't because you stitch too close to the zip the first time around, you're going to want to probably unpick it so that you won't see it when we turn the bag back through. And then when you get back to the start, we're going to back stitch. Then you can just flip this up and then push this in to turn it back what looks like inside out but is actually the inside of the bag and then I'm going to top stitch to hold it all in place now if you left the gap here just make sure you tuck it down but mine really wasn't so bad so I just want to make sure that they're both down and then I'm not going to back stitch because I'm going to go completely the way around. I will just go over the original stitching when I get back to the start. Needle down, pull, needle down and pull. I'm just going to do it in sections. So I'm pulling on this part and I'm using my fingernails to pull the teeth back so it's all sitting nice and flat. And you should have just enough room to go past your strap connectors if all has gone to plan. Continuing around, I'm nearly back to the start now. And it's just occurred to me now that I didn't pay attention to which way the zipper will be facing the bag. Uh, so I don't know if mine are going to be facing the same way or opposite. And I've just realized I ran out of bobbin thread. I wonder how long it took you guys. You probably saw it before I did. At least there's no clips and pins and stuff. All right. I'm just going to wind that back up. Every time I pick them up, they manage to come undone. It's a special gift of mine, I guess. So we'll go back to where I ran out of top stitching thread. And I'm going to go back over the last about three stitches and I'm going to back stitch over them to hold it all in place and then we're going to go and fix all of those things now because I've already stitched through it even though there was no thread it's already kind of been squished and sits flatter so you can do it a little bit quicker which is nice nearly back to the start And then when you get to the start, I'm going to go over three stitches and then back stitch. And that'll lock in the start and the finish all in one. And trim off all these tails because we don't want them hanging around. All right. And so now you should have this. And yes, I'm very aware we're missing a whole section. That is fine. Where is? The other piece. All right, so if these are, oh, look at that. I managed to fluke them so that they will sit the same way in the bag. That was definitely an accident. So maybe just think about that when you're making it. But that worked out great for me. So there you go. Next section. Oh, where's the mouse for my computer? So I've done that page. We've done that. I've put that in. Ooh, we are up to page 41. Look at us go. So we're up to like main assembly now. So we need our exterior and we need these bad boys, I believe. We do. And we're going to need our base, which is all the way over there. I don't know why. The idea is, is that this is going to be stitched here. 
like this. This is this is the big goal. So on the outside where your strap connectors are, this is where we're going to attach this. So I need to turn this back the wrong way so that I can get to it easier. And the side that the connectors are on is the side that this is going to be on. So I'm going to fold it in half to find the center because again, centers are just easier. And then I'm going to do the same to this. You can even just put your two strap connectors together because then that's the center like that. And then match up the two clips and clip it down. Always add two clips before you let go. That's where the end is and it should match up with the end of the point if all goes to plan. And if not, you may need to do some shuffling. And lots of clips because I'm trying to bend this into a weird shape and it's not loving me doing it. Because we're going like around a curve. As you can see, it doesn't sit at all straight. Something to think about. Alright, so I believe I'm going to stitch from here to here and then top stitch it down. So we're going to go back to adjoining stitch length. I really hope this is right because I didn't read the instructions. So we may have to unpick everything in a minute. So to there, using the correct seam allowance. And along we go. Slow and steady does win the race with this because there's lots of maneuvering. You don't want to over perforate your vinyl by having to unpick it if you used vinyl. You didn't have to. And backstitch at the end. And then check it to make sure that we did it correctly. Ta da! Don't worry about the edgy bits. So that is now like the outside wall of one of them. I like it. It does want us to top stitch, so I have to kind of lift all of this out of the way so that I can top stitch along here. It's probably not 100% necessary with how mine's sitting, but I am still going to do it. And we are top stitching on the vinyl, so on my dragon scales. Move that because it's in my way. And I'm up to, all the way up to four with my decorative stitch length. Um, and I'm making sure I'm not stitching over any of the pockets. That's really important or you're going to wreck the storage space, basically. Moving along slowly but surely. And backstitch. And clip. And we need to get those bits. No more tails, top stitched, and it looks fabulous. Now we have to do the same to the other side. So flick it back up. Make sure that your zipper end is out of the way. I'm going to line up and find the center, because I'm all about the center of everything. It really is just easier. Fold it in half. Find the center. Also, fun fact that you will find it at the start of the video, but I only just found out. Uh, this fabric, it glows in the dark, which I, I thought it looked a little bit like greeny tinged, and then I just thought I was crazy. Uh, but turns out that this one actually glows in the dark, so this bag just becomes so much cooler. I don't know where I got the fabric from. I'm pretty sure I got it from a D stash, uh, so I can't get any more, which if I hadn't known it was glow in the dark I probably would have just hoarded it instead of using it but here we are using it anyway 
and it will still look very cool. So again, we're going to have that thing where it wants to fight me to go around this curve. If you've got stronger clips, I suggest you use those ones. But we are getting there slowly. To the edge and a clip and another one for good measure. So it does, it does not sit straight at all. Uh, so you just have to go with it. As weird as that sounds, like if it's gonna bend and be weird, just let it be, be let it be weird. It will sit straight eventually. You just gotta have some faith. So I'm starting in the corner, backstitch. Oh, I just caught the pocket excess. So I'm now gonna cut that because otherwise it's gonna wreck my memento. I just cut, um, it didn't do it inside of the stitch line, so it's of no consequence, really. I can show you what happened now that I finished stitching. Um, this little bit here caught, but it's outside the stitch line, so I could just cut it and get it out of my way. So now we're going to top stitch on the vinyl because we did it to the other side and we want it to match. I also got cold after lunch, which is why I'm now in a jacket again. Move Scully so that you don't spill everything because there's literally nothing worse. And top stitch. correctly you should have another one that looks like this right I need to hit pause to go get the base all right one base I am not using ba uh, bag feet for this just because I have opted not to but I am using my awesome textured vinyl because I thought that would be fun so I'm starting at an end I'm clipping along I'm gonna get to the other end and then clip backwards because it should fit and it is a slight little bit of a curve. Um, as you can see by me holding it, it looks really prominent in the video. It's actually not that bad, really. It's like a tiny little curve. But we're now going to stitch the base down. And then back stitch. Stitch along and back stitch. And then while I'm here, I'm going to bend that over itself and then top stitch onto, actually, is it going to allow me to? It should. I want to top stitch along the vinyl. So I'm having the seam allowance under where I'm going to stitch. So that helps the bag sit nicer. So I'm going to do a one eighth of an inch seam allowance for my top stitching. I'm not sure what the pattern says to do, but that's just my favourite top stitching length. And back stitch. Trim those tails. And then I'm going to grab the other side and do the same thing. And it's starting to come together now as a glorious bag. I think so anyway. And then to here, line up the two edges and then just clip the rest in the middle. Oops. All right, done. And we're going to stitch. So 
away, chop off that tail, and then move this all the way out of the way because I'm going to top stitch this bit and it's going to be a lot of fabric. So I'm back up to a decorative stitch length. from those tails as they stick out so this is what we've got so from the outside we've now got all of that we just need the middle uh, I imagine I need to do something similar for the middle of this so this is my base I didn't put interfacing on this particular piece of fabric because it doesn't really need it um, it's not a cotton it's like a garbadine so, we need to leave a hole in the base of this to turn the bag through. So I'm going to only go to like there and then backstitch. I just need enough to be able to do the seam allowance and still be able to get to it. And then I'm going to do this end as well. And I'm going to do it on the not zipper pocket side. Because it's always easier to pull it through when it's not on the same side as the zipper pocket. So that's my personal experience. So that's what I'm going to do. You're welcome to put it on the other side. I also like to stitch it first, generally speaking, so I don't forget. Then I'm going to grab the other half and then do this side. And I'm just going to stitch all the way along this one. We don't need two openings. That would get confusing. Stitch and back stitch off the tails so now that is the inside of the bag so I want to take this and I want to find the center shocker I know we know how I feel about the center of everything so I'm just gonna fold it in half get clips I'm gonna put one and then I can open it out and separate the two layers so that they both have clips. Oops. Like that. So now I can sew them as separate entities. I'm also going to zip it all the way open because it's going to, as you can see, it makes it more flexible. Now I've already found the center of this top here. Uh, but I didn't find the center of this side, so we need to do that. Trim it or put a clip, whichever works for you. So I'm going to do this, the lining first because it's always more pliable and it'll be easier to do. So, center to center. And I want a clip facing the zipper. You are going to need a lot of clips for this. Um, and even more for the outside. This is probably going to be the trickiest part of the bag, if I'm honest. So I'm going to go along this top. Along the top like this. And then the center bottom will be the center of the end. Um, you can fold it in half to find it if you want to, or you can eyeball it. So you can just do that and add a clip. That's now the center. And I'm gonna put that here. If you have ever made Maisie by Swoon, it's a similar kind of thing. Or um, Colette bag by, is it Colette? I think it's Colette. By Kaya Papaya. Similar thing, similar kind of, motion it's obviously an ultimately different shape but it is constructed in a similar kind of way and if all goes to plan it fits perfectly so then i'm going to come to this end actually 
fold it in half, find the center. You're going to use a lot of clips for this. If you don't have enough to clips to do all of it, clip as much as you can, stitch it, and then go again. So you can do it in sections if you need to. I happen to have a boatload of clips, so that won't be necessary for me. But if you've only got like 20 or 30 and you can't get the whole way around this bag, don't fret. Just do it in sections. It's not going to harm anything. See how that just fits? If anything's just not fitting, it's probably due to your seam allowances. You may need to let some out or add some in. Uh, but I feel like this would probably be pretty forgiving. So now we're going to do the other half. So I'm going to come to here. You want to make sure there's no twists anywhere. If this was twisted, that would suck. Because you'd clip it and then get to the end and realise you have to unclip the whole lot again. So just make sure there's no twists and turns in it. And you, you just want to push away that outside lining because we are fairly close to it. Grab some more clips. Another way that you could do this is with binding. Um, you could tack it all together and then bind it together. That would work. Uh, but then you'd see it on the inside of the bag. And some people don't like binding, which is fair enough. It's not for everyone. Although if you've never tried it, please go look at one of the videos that I've done with binding. It is kind of fun. There's a free pattern by Sincerely Jen, the banana hammock that I did that has binding. So we're just clipping. So as long as you get the side, like the four points of evenness, you can kind of start and work from wherever you like. I always seem to like to work right to left as a general rule, uh, which is why I started at the bottom and worked my way up. But again, do whatever you're comfortable with. As long as all the clips get on, it doesn't really matter. The lining is going to be the easy one, by the way. Uh, and if you're new to bag making and have decided that this absolutely has to be your first bag, uh, I suggest doing it in stages. Don't try and do it all in a day. It might frustrate you a little bit. This is, this is probably definitely an intermediate bag because of all this curving. It's not impossible to do. It just it takes a minute. I remember when I first tried Maisie by Swoon, I absolutely sucked at it and it made me very, very cranky. And I would hate for you to hate bag making because you picked a, a difficult pattern to begin with. Probably also helps that there's a video to watch what's going on. Alright, so this is what we've got, a big floppy mess of clips. I am on a joining stitch length of two and a half, and I am just going to start wherever I feel necessary because we go all the way around. So I'm just going to start here-ish. No official responses to wear, just wherever you feel comfortable stitching, that's where you should start. And you just got to make sure, you can't really see what I'm doing, but I'm pulling this out of the way so that it doesn't get caught up in my stitches. Make sure you're using the correct seam allowance. And I'm going to move that base out of the way. I'm going along that edge. You always want to stop with your needle down before you try and reposition stuff. And we're just going to keep twisting the bag around so that we don't accidentally sew something we shouldn't because then we have to go and unpick and we all know how I feel about unpicking. I do not enjoy doing it for anyone that doesn't know. Make sure that none of the pockets get caught up either. As you can just see I just had to move that one out of the way. Also make sure you haven't run out of bobbin. 
I know I won't now, but, you know, I did before. And you guys probably run on different size bobbins to me. Or you use a different thickness thread and so you can fit more or less on your bobbin. This is an M40. Um, so it's thicker than like a normal clothing sewing thread. So I'm nearly back to the start actually. That went by a lot quicker than I thought it would. Now that I'm back to the start, I'm going to back stitch and then trim those tails. And so now you should have a bag that has a big opening in the bottom. But it's starting to really take shape now, which is awesome. Now we're going to take our outside and we're going to do the same thing, except that we're going up here and across this part which may make it a little bit more tricky for you. So, on this short edge, we are going to find the center. And the reason I call it short edge is because that's what the piece is called, the short top edge. And I'm going to do the same to the opposite side. And this was the same as finding the center of the dome part. Right, center, center. And then I'm going to find the center of this end. There and there. And then we're going to join it. And this is going to be the tricky part. So because I need to do right sides together, the first thing I'm doing is flicking that so it's going to sit over and sit weird. But you just need to trust me on this. So we're going to flick this over like that. And now I'll be able to get to it in like a nice smooth motion. I'm also, see this tail that's annoying me and I just moved it twice? I am going to clip the tail of the zipper to the strap connector like that so that it stays out of my way and I don't accidentally stitch it because that would wreck the zip. The other one seems to be tucked away fine. That's good. All right. So, center. Center clip. Together. And clip facing the zipper piece. Now, this is going to get tricky. It's going to get super bulky. Uh, we're dealing with vinyl. We're dealing with foam. You're going to want your clips pretty close together so that it won't move while we're trying to... Uh, not clip it. Yeah, no, clip it. Right. And I want another one in between there. I'm going to put probably nearly twice as many clips on this as I did to the other side. I'm going to put that in the center. Like that with three clips so that it can't move. Then I'm going to the opposite side. And you may wonder, why don't I just start in one spot and move all the way around? And the simple answer is, because that never works. The more complicated answer is because if you pull too much, you'll get all the way around and then have all this excess fabric left over, which is obviously not what you want. Uh, so by dividing it into four, that is how much fabric has to fit in that section. So I'm, I'm essentially dividing up the bag into four bits to make sure that all four bits are then going to sit where they're told. And we use multiple clips each time because it helps take the force of this not wanting to sit in the shape that we want it to. So like right now, see that? That has to attach to that. Uh, and we're dealing with bag foam and a funky shape. So you need lots of clips. And this, this space does fit this bag. So you just need to keep working on it until it fits. 
Oops, lost that clip inside the bag. I will find it later. You also, on top of all of this, want to make sure that we don't capture the lining while we're stitching. Which is why we do this one second, because trying to keep this out of the way would be much harder than keeping the lining out of the way. There is method to my madness, I swear. So then this is curving around. The, the clips are now almost on top of each other for this part because it's super tricky. See how that fits? It just took us a minute. With clips that almost touch each other, especially on that bit. So see that? We've now got... A quarter of the bag done. Yay! So again, if you don't have enough clips, do it in sections. Do the top curvy parts first, and then do these ends, because the ends are the trickiest part. I suppose, or you could do the flat edge part first. It's really up to you, I guess. Or buy more clips that's an option too let's be honest the cheap ones are pretty cheap off like amazon and ebay and all that so see how that just fits so that's like one end in i know it doesn't look at i know it just looks like a big mess right now but I, I swear, we are getting there. We're just going to keep pushing all this other stuff out of the way. That's all I'm really doing. I'm working my way down the curve towards the, the end bend, for lack of a better word. And because it, it sounds cool, the end bend. Grab some more clips. Now, because the other three sides are now in, I don't know if you, oh no, two sides. The other end is in though, and it is starting to bend more the way I want it to and less the way it wants to, which is what we need. Oops. I'm still, even though it's holding now, I'm still putting clips there because when I start to maneuver the, the bag, it's going to try and fight me. Uh, so the more clips you've got, the better off you'll be when you're up to sewing. Just because it sits there well with few clips off the table, it's not going to be that forgiving when we stick it under the needle. So lots of clips close together is going to help hold the shape until we get to that part of the stitching. So this is the last curve and see like I could skip like it it's sitting pretty much where it needs to however I am still gonna put a crap load of clips because it'll shift under the needle so if we tuck that in just to prove a point it's kind of almost got its shape I know it's still a bit funky but that's again because it's fighting itself so you can kind of start from wherever you want wherever makes you comfortable um and this this part here is the reason why it's not a beginner bag by the way all the other stuff would have been fine it's just this final bit that's a little bit tricky it's not impossible though if i can do it you can do it it just might take you a bit longer because you've had less sewing experience. But it doesn't mean you can't do it. So as you can see, I'm sewing very slowly compared to my usual speed. And that is for a couple of reasons. One, because the lining keeps trying to get under my needle and we don't want that. And two, because I'm trying to kind of push down and I'm using my arm to help push the bag under the needle in the shape that I want it to hold. Now this bag did have an option for piping. Piping would make the bag sit nicer when you're finished 
but it does make it harder to sew. So that is a decision that you will have to make. Um, I have clearly chosen not piping because this bag has already taken ages. Um, and I was going to do other things today. So that's one curvy end done now. And the reason that I can actually go as fast as I am is because there's a crap ton of clips holding it in place. And it may not go as smoothly as you want, but it will go. I'm also going slow to constantly make sure that nothing is poking out underneath where I'm sewing, like a pocket or, a, you know, something. Probably a pocket. And again, so see that? I just shifted the whole shape of the bag by moving that bit out of my way. I'm basically holding it flat and sewing in small flat areas to get the curve without stitching the lining. The lining is currently constantly flapping down onto it because it's so close to the zipper. Which is fine, it just it takes a minute, that's all. I know I said it before, but I'm going to say it again. Check your bobbin, especially doing this tight corner. I would hate for you to run out after you just pull all your clips off. And even though I recently changed mine, I am still checking it because you never know. It's very easy to get lost in how much thread you've used. This is bobbin three for me on this bag. See that? That was a little bit of a straight bit. Before we get into this next curve. So I'm coming up towards the home stretch now. And now it's stuck under some bulk. You just give it a light tug as you're sewing so that you don't bend your needle. You don't want a big tug, you want a light tug. And back stitch back at the start. Now it doesn't look like it. But there's only two more seams and some handles, which I haven't ironed yet. Whoops. All right. So before we go trimming any seams, turn your bag through to make sure that you caught everything. Because occasionally I miss bits in curves, so I like to check before I go cutting. That makes it much harder to get a correct seam allowance if you've just cut the seam allowance off. So we're going through the base of the lining and you'll notice that because it's so large, this is actually coming through a lot easier than I thought it would, considering how much bulk there is with this bag. All right, so now I'm gonna put my hand back in and I literally wanna poke the whole, everything we just sewed to make sure that I haven't missed anywhere. So we're looking all along this seam here. Oh, I just ran out of battery power. I'm gonna have to get a cord and plug my phone in. All right, let me get a cord because otherwise we'll stop recording. Crisis averted, I have battery again. I haven't done anything to the bag yet. So, I'm gonna push these sides in, zip it up. And then I'm gonna unclip that one, because it was misbehaving, and push this side in. Oh, this bag is really cool. Like that. And then, I need to come back and make sure I've pushed out all the ends to check and see if there's anywhere where I didn't stitch it correctly. So we're literally like fine tooth combing it. 
And a good little pinch here. See that? I don't like that. We're going to fix it. All right. Pull through that part and then see what I did wrong. I can see already what I did wrong. I've just grabbed a little bit extra fabric. So I'm going to clip those threads to release it. And I'm just picking out the thread like that. And then I'm just going to re-sew that area so that you can't tell that it was ever there. And it's only like an inch and a half. So it's not a big deal. Uh, but that little bit is the difference between selling a bag full price and calling it a second. Ooh. Alright, now let's check it out. See? It was never there. Crisis averted. Minus that thread, of course. But still, I love it. Looks great. Into the zipper pocket. Grabbing the base. And then pulling the base lining through the zipper pocket. Now you may or may not need clips for this. I'm going to go clipless. We'll see how I go. I may need to stop and add clips because it is quite a long base. But the bigger the gap you leave open, the easier it is to turn through. But also the more tricky it is to then close said gap. So, you know, take a punt. back to the other stitching and back stitch and then you can push the base in take the pocket and I'm just going to tuck under a knuckles worth like that stitch back stitch and then I'm top stitching an eighth of an inch from the edge of the pocket Trim that off, tuck that in, zip it up, zip that one up, and your bag's nearly done. Sits. Sits pretty good actually. I need to do a Tory squish on all these edges so that it sits nicer, but it is looking pretty good. So now we just need some handles. So for the handles, I am doing nothing that's in the pattern. I'm doing my half fabric, half vinyl handles uh, for a couple of reasons. One, I didn't have the stuff to do rolled handles, which I did explain earlier. And B, this will now glow in the dark. So I will have glow in the dark handles, and that is so cool. I'm really bummed I don't have any more of that fabric. Actually, there might be enough to make a wallet. I will have to check, but I've got no lining. So I'm just going to bend this over and squish it down in the center. Now, if you've got a little bit of a gap, this particular time, it's not going to be the end of the world because we're putting fabric over the top of this joint. But I am still going to use my little tool to kind of squish it flat and create a crease so that it won't keep trying to lift on me while I'm trying to sew it because I don't want to play that game. Moving along. Right. You can also uh, rub it on the edge of a table. That's another good way to get a crease if you don't own one of these. Um, but it's just to help like put vinyl on. I think I got, I got one from Bunnings. This one's from the Vinyl Loft because uh, that's where I get my heat transfer vinyl. 
or HTV as it is known as. And my sticker stuff too, actually. Squish it. The crease just makes it so it won't pop up again. Uh, different vinyls are different amounts of tricky or stubborn. Uh, so some of them will just bend over and stay. And some of them, even after you do this, will still try and lift on you. Different brands do different stuff. This one is the Standard Pacifica that I sell. So this is what it'll do. Um, the, the textured vinyl that I've been using is from Spotlight. See, look, it still did it. That just means I have to push harder. Create more of a crease. The crease isn't going to damage anything. It's just helping it sit there. It's also going to make it a little bit skinnier. Because it's making it flatter. Won't hurt it. I mean, if you scrape as hard as humanly possible, it might. But beyond that, you should be fine. So, decorative stitch length. Check. Tucking under the raw edge. Check. I'm going to sew across the edge. Now these are the handle sizes that the pattern tells you. It's just I've made them different. This is just going to sit along the top. And again, I have to be conscious of my bobbin. I don't know how much i got left. I can hear it's less than half. Um, after you sit at your sewing machine forever, you'll start to pick up on little noise changes. So these are going to have to be a little bit shorter because this was the end of the fabric, I think. Or at least the end of the long part. So I'm going to tuck under that bit. I'm going to go needle down. I've just run out of bobbin thread. See? It's like I knew. All right, I'm going to hit pause one last time so we can do one more bobbin. All right, new bobbin is in. Uh, so I'm going to just chop off that little tail and then go back to where I run out of bobbin. I'm going to put my needle in and then we're going to go backwards and then forwards and then tuck under the raw edge again. Needle down. Go across. You can trim these tails now so that they don't accidentally get caught up in stuff like the other half. It is a thing that happens. And then this is all started lifting. Now because I'm stitching it, it will stop doing its lifting because it's literally stuck in place. Uh, but until then, I've just got to manually kind of shove it under there. And then when I get back to the start, we're going to back stitch again. Or well, the start of the stitching. Let's see. Excellent. So that is one glow in the dark handle. See this? It's clearly having a moment today. I wasn't rough enough. Or I didn't put the sticky tape in the centre. That's also sometimes a thing. It's not perfectly in the center, it's not evenly holding, and then it can sometimes give me grief. Uh, but pushing it against the edge of the table quite often helps re-crease it, I should say. And if not, oh well. Can't win them all. It's usually not like this, actually. Okay, tuck under the raw edge. We want the join facing upwards, which I didn't mention before, but I'm going to say it now. And then, stitch, back stitch. And off we go. Just broke my thread. Handles are not my forte today, apparently. Mm, so 
we'll go back to there and we'll back stitch and forward stitch to lock it in again. I'm going to have to tuck under this, uh, but it should be the same amount of excess on both handles, which at least works out in our favour. Needle down, double cross, trim that tail. And I'm going to have to cut out all of that mess. If you cut it till it's almost flat, you can actually grab a lighter and melt most of it down. And then it's barely noticeable, just for future reference. The second side's usually quicker than the first because it's already lying in place. And I say usually because it's not always the case. All right, handle, handle. So around we go. Actually, we're going to need to do this evenly. So first up, we need a hole punch. We're going to need a marking pen. And I'm going to need my um, rivet placement thing and some scissors to chop off that extra vinyl which should be the same on both all right so first things first I'm gonna lay it directly over so that they're gonna be centered this is exactly one inch. We're making one inch straps. So it makes sense to just lay it there. So my first hole is going to be half an inch up from the end. And then I'm going to go one, two, three, four, five holes up and do another one. That gives me one and a quarter uh, between the gaps to be able to get all the way around the chunky squares. So we're going to do the same again. Line it up with edges and edges and then go and then one, two, three, four, five and go again which you can't really see because it lands right on the black. So while I know where it is, oh, I already lost it. Oh, no, there it is. Squish that one. I'm only doing that one now because it was very hard to see. Happened to land on a black part of my strap. So while you kind of got it in sight, put your hole in. So again, one, two, three, four, five. Other end. Same again. Line it up. To up two and then two, one, two, three, four, five. So this, this has got four. So this has got the option to have two rivets or a single rivet on one inch. And this one does one and a half inch because they're the only hardware options that I carry at the moment. One day I'd like a lot more, but it's space and money and stuff. And then I'm just going to push all of the holes I've done that one and so this one and this one like that and that should be all of your holes so you can put that down and then I'm gonna pick up this one I'm going to thread the handle in so that from the outside the fabric is showing because I want to be able to see my glow in the darkness and because it's white what goes on your shoulder will be the vinyl so it's going to get less dirty I can't I can't say it'll never get dirty because that's impossible but it'll get less dirty if it's on the top instead of on the bottom Now, if I had to move these up another hole, so I had to done three from the edge, you also could have put on strap connectors, which would have been a lovely additive, but I forgot about them. I got too excited about the whole glow in the dark thing. I've also got two different sizes in there just to really annoy myself. And I picked up a small one. I like um, eight to nine mils. And the one I just picked up before was a seven. It's more for decorative purposes. So that's one handle. Grab the other one, go again. 
So I'll show you the difference. This is a 9mm and this is a 7mm. Now while it doesn't look like a really big difference, I promise it is. Let me see if I can move it closer for you. If you line them up, that extra little bit that you can see makes a big difference when going through multiple layers of vinyl. Whereas the little one is really good for decorative because you're less likely to distort it when you squish it. So they all have their place. Hello, Knuckles. You coming to say hello? It's the first time he's come to hang out with me all day. Isn't it, Poppy? Hey? Hello. Hello. Do you go outside? Yeah, all right. Give me a second. I'm nearly done. Okay. Squish it. Take it. And squish it. And your bag is complete. Let me just put that down so you can see it. You've got a zipper here. You've got a nice plain front that was going to glow in the dark. You've got your two top zipper sections which go all the way in. And then you've got your main body. So that was fun. It's definitely a mission. Um, probably like a weekend bag, like a project bag, but it is very cool. So thank you for joining me, um, and I will hopefully be doing another video for you tomorrow. Bye, guys.